from Atlanta, Georgia. Beautiful, wonderfully made by God. Welcome to the nation. I say, have you forgotten that the institution of marriage, the way God created it, he did not make provision for domestic violence. If a man is loving his wife like Christ loved the church and gave his life for him, and a woman is submitting to that love, where in this where in this situation is mm -hmm. domestic violence? No, that's why God didn't talk about it because he knew that there is no reason. If you do marriage the way marriage is supposed to be, how can you, you say two shall become one. If two of you are one and I, myself and my, you are one, if you hit me, you hit yourself. You are beating yourself. If you stab me, you're stabbing yourself. If you throw, send me out and I sleep outside, you're sending yourself outside. And you won't do that to yourself. So if you're not going to do that to yourself, then you shouldn't do it to me. But the problem I've noticed in Christianity is we pick the verse of the Bible we like. The one that suits the situation we like. And then we leave the other ones. We and that is, that, ones. that is what I call selective application. Mm -hmm. We select the ones we want and we leave out the rest. But if you want to do what we call an open completeness, you have to read the whole thing together to understand it. If you believe that God is love and you believe that you and your wife join to be one, how can you tell me that whatever I say to you or whatever I, whatever behavior I put up is why you beat on me? How is that possible? Are you going to beat on yourself? Mm -hmm. Are you going to beat on yourself? You are not. So let mm -hmm. us face the fact. What we are trying to do by bringing in all these issues is to take away from the main issue, domestic violence is wrong. So we're exactly. bringing all these issues to justify why we should continue to be in the marriage that we have seen is leading to death. Mm -hmm. That is not good for us. That mm -hmm. is not good for our children, our so-called children for whom we want to stay behind. It is not mm -hmm. even good for them. It's not healthy for them. It's not healthy for them. And then let's talk about this because I have had so many people tell me, so many people tell me, oh, but why didn't he tell the man of God? Why didn't he tell the pastor? You should tell your pastor. When did pastors begin to determine who lives a marriage, who lives an abusive marriage and who doesn't? My I sisters, my that. brothers, my uniques, please, I want to come to you guys. You can tell your pastor if you want to tell your pastor because that is your spiritual father. Like we have a physical father, you have a spiritual father who you want to tell. But you are not telling him because he will tell you to stay. Or you are not telling him so that he will tell you to leave. Because mostly they will not tell you to leave. Because 70% of pastors themselves are abusers. 70% of pastors, they say it's chastising. They whip their wives. They slap their wives and they say they are correcting them. Because they look at the favorite Bible quote they use. That God says, spare the rod and spoil the child. You, 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 you correct with love of love, with rod of love. My sister, my brother, don't let anybody deceive you. Whether they call it Panadolo, or they call it Prasitamolo, or they call it any kind of name, it is a painkiller. It is a painkiller. Don't let nobody deceive you. Because they want to make you, because whether we like it or not, religion played a part in Osinachi's death. Correct. Religion is the major part in her death. Maybe she could have walked away. Maybe she could have said that I don't want. Maybe she could have taken a break. But she was so concerned about that ministry, about that church, about that ministry, ministry, uh, ministry what, whatever, ministering in songs. She did it because she knew if she left that marriage, if she walked away from that marriage, she knows because she has been a Christian for a long time. She knows nobody will invite her to, her, to their altar. She knows nobody will pay her any attention. She knows even the day she divorces that man. I'm telling you guys, that is the day that Dunamis Church will take her from the leadership position. They will take her down. Because churches now are brands. Just like Unique is a brand. This business is a brand. Churches now are brands and they don't want to mess up their brands. If you want to talk to your spiritual father, talk to your spiritual father. But you are the one that is wearing the shoe. You know where it hurts. Get help for you and your children. He, at the rate this thing is going, we don't know what will happen. Osnachi's husband might end up in jail. Osnachi is gone. What happened to those four beautiful children? What happens to them? So guys, please, let us be very, very careful. Like Dr. Oprah said, 
Abuse is not tolerated. There is no justification. I don't care what that person did. Even if that person, you came home and found your wife with a man, send her packing if you don't want. Divorce her if you don't want. Tell her you don't want her anymore. But don't go and start hitting somebody else's child. Dr. Hill, Dr. Oprah, what do you have to add there? I want to add that I want people to put themselves in the shoes of Osnachi's mother. You gave birth to a child and you raised your child. And someone came to your house and told you that they love your child and they want to make a home with your child. Mm -hmm. You gave your child to a man that you trusted will take care of your child. Then down the line, you are called and told that that same man has killed your child. Or is instrumental to the death of your child. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Do Even you feel? those of us, or those men that hit on their wives, including this man that is talking this nonsense on this video, how will he feel if his, daughter, his daughter is subjected exactly. to that? Mm. How will he feel if somebody is beating on his own daughter and he sees his daughter with bruises and stuff? How will he feel? Let us just be truthful to ourselves. Mm -hmm. The domestic violence against women is not, some people say it's cultural, some say it's tradition. It is never our tradition, it's never our culture. Yes, mm -hmm. women may take a second place, but the bottom line is that a man that considers himself a man will never beat on a woman. That's right. No matter That's what, what no matter what, no matter what circumstance, no matter what, and that is what mm -hmm. we're teaching. If you are a true man, you will not beat on your wife. Exactly. And 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 vice versa, women women should not beat on their husbands either. I'm not advocating for that either. Mm -hmm. What I'm advocating is for Both life. Them should not. I'm advocating for life. Domestic life. violence has no place in our marriages. We should choose life. As opposed to death, we should choose life. If that life means separating yourself, separate. If it means divorcing the person, divorce. Marriage is not a do or die affair. It is not. Let tell me, like you said, what is going to happen to the children now? The no. woman said she stayed for her for her children, right? Mm -hmm. Now she's dead. What if her husband goes to jail? What happens to the children? The four children you brought into this world, they are going to go through hell. Just because your husband and yourself did not realize that you have brought some people into this world into and this you world. Act better for, for their own interest. You should act better for their interest. So there's no reason, my dear, for us to take domestic abuse. None. And I will say it and I'll say it again. Domestic violence is never condoned. It's never excused. It's never justified, no matter the circumstance. 